first thing I'm going to do today is I'm going to cut my PETG the same size as my frames. So my frames are 12 inches by 17 and a half inches. I'm going to go ahead and lay out two. This is 060, which is a little tough to cut. I would probably use a table saw with the uh, blade reversed to cut this if I was doing production parts. There is a thin film that will have to be pulled off both sides of the PETG. While I'm not forgetting, after I make this last cut, I'm going to turn my oven on to 350 degrees. You need to wait until the oven heats, preheats to 350 degrees to get the proper uh, temperature for the plastic because if you try to put it in there early, the plastic will start deforming and it'll deform too slow. I haven't fine tuned the size of the plastic yet. I'm kind of making use of the frames that I have already. <laughs> this is a new process to me. So I'm going to go ahead and pull the protective layer off before I attach it to the frame. Right. Nice clear sheet. Attach my clamps to my frame. And go ahead and put it on both sides. It's exactly 11.39. I'm going to start my time now to see how long it takes for the 0 0.060 to sag. This I basically drilled a hole in the end to support it on the golf shaft. And this was two pieces of poplar uh, wood hand sanded off of a template. And uh, I just hand sanded it as smooth as I could make it. It's 11. 40 right now. I'm going to take this part off and stick it in the oven. The uh, 30 seconds for the actual plug to go into the oven. My PETG has sagged at 1 minute 30 seconds. You have to make sure that your uh, your parts totally parallel to your golf shaft. Otherwise, you'll have a bubble pulled out on one side or the other. And that's it. It is now cooling. The part is pulled. That's how fast it happens. This is still kind of soft. You can see it here. Yeah, I can touch it, but it is pretty warm. Now what I'll do is I'll trim it. The next process in order to, to take this plug off because it will pull a vacuum on here, uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, drill a small hole in the nose. It's such an airtight fit on the pod that it will not come off if you try pulling it off right now. And I'm gonna make a knife cut. This is the uh, top part of my pod here. So I'm going to make a small knife cut to the halfway mark. That way it will release off the back on each side of the uh, pod. I'll slowly work it out. It would probably uh, make it a little easier if you had a relief uh, channel in your wood plug on the bottom. Because as I pull it out, it's still trying to uh, deflate the nose a little bit. See right there, it's drawn vacuum. 
Now, right now I'm gonna release it and it's gonna pop out. So, there's your new part. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, pull one more. This is what you end up with. And I have an experiment with how much of this is actually waste because you've gotta be able to pull enough down. So, checking temperature on the plug still to make sure it's minimum room temperature. service maintenance program, the most comprehensive zero-cost maintenance program in its class, which means it's kept in perfect condition. And because it's so precisely maintained, it's pull number two. more than most cars, which in turn gives BMWs a strong resale value. That I didn't know, I didn't heat this one up because the last one was a little bit thinner than I would like, and the longer you heat it up, the, the thinner the material is going to get when you stretch it. It starts cooling off from the top. As soon as you put it on the plug, it starts cooling off.